Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and as promised, I'm going to do a quick uh, breakdown and summary of uh, what I think could be a good build and a good way to approach the uh, Xfinity race from today. It's it's a different type of uh, of track that we've seen so far over the last you know several months, in that it's a very uh, just short track. In other words, it's it's it's, it's a short track. It's it's less amount of miles to get around the track, which means that there are more laps to be had, which means a couple of things that the points that you're going to get from fastest laps and laps led are going to add up uh, much more. I mean, there's much more of those to go around. Um, and also because of the short track, it, it's a little more difficult to pass anybody. So it's not like Daytona and some of these other huge tracks where you just kind of get away and staying in the back and weave through the field and, and all that stuff. Um, it is much more difficult to kind of, you know, come from like 25 back and win the race. Uh, you got to be much, much better than everybody else. Um, so what you'll find is that the, the best plays are not always going to be place differential plays. Um, it, good place differentials kind of tough to come by in these types of fields. Um, now, with that said, DraftKings are, you know, they're not stupid. They're not going to make it easy on you to just to take guys in the front either. And the other thing to keep in mind is that there is negative correlation involved with taking too many guys in the front, because if you take, you know, every guy that you have banking on him leading laps is impacted whenever he's not leading a lap. So if you have like three guys that are supposed to be leading laps, they can't all be leading the lap at the same time. So you do have negative correlation issues. So even though it's not like Daytona that you don't want to play everybody from the back, um, you also don't want to, in my opinion, at least just pay everybody from the front. Um, so what I did was, again, this is like the summary of like uh, of all the research. I, I looked at race for the prize and brand and stuff and, and Stevie and like all the stuff that I, that's available to me. And then I, kind of put my own kind of spin on it with respect to how I think the race is going to go. And then what I did was, again, I interlaid ownership on top of it and came out with what I think is kind of a good grid here. So, so what, what I like to do, like I said before, is I like to try to find guys that are well projected and also not the chalkiest guys on the slate, obviously. And then if that also fits in with the construction I described earlier, that would be even ideal. But, you know, obviously you're not going to be able to get everything, but who knows? So the first thing you'll notice is, is my top ranked guy, Ty Gibbs. I mean, I really thought that he was going to be about 70% owned. Uh, he, I, I guess he could be, but the ownership that I'm seeing right now, and again, I have to, you know, these, have, these are going to update over the next couple of hours. But as I look at other sources and as I kind of tweak things along the way, um, like this is just one source, whatever is, is, um, 20%. I'm mean, that, that just, to me, that just can't be, I mean, I, I just, I, I would, if I played 150 lineups, I'd put him in 150. Um, that, I'll just leave it at that. Um, he does has the combination of winning the race potential and does have place differential as well. Um, so to me, he's the safest play I can, I have, um, then as again, as, as you know, you could just look at like kind of a list of best plays, but it's not that easy. So what I like to uh, you, cause you also want to get, take lower own stuff. So what I would do again is you'd wait for ownership to update and then just kind of see. So like Brandon Jones, for example, I kind of like that. Um, he's rates to be a good play, but not exactly as high owned as like Cindric and Almendinger, like for example, and then the guy that's really standing out for me is Harrison Burton. Like Harrison Burton is projected to be under 10% owned and I have him rated as like a top 10 play. So for me, that's uh, going to be a real premium part of my build. Uh, Ryan Sieg, uh, he's chalky, but he's, uh, he's cheap. And, and thusly, you know, and, and that's how you just keep going down the list here. Like a guy like this, like Brandon Brown, you know, not the best projected guy in the world, but because he's low owned, he's going to make, make, you know, really big, big impact on my lineups, whether I build them by hand or using Saber Sim or whatever, even as far down as maybe Justin Haley or Jeb Burton, because their ownership is so low, they're going to show up. Landon Castle is going to show up. Right. Um, so 
With that said, let me take a quick look at the at the grid, right? So the grid is, you know, where these guys are starting from. You don't want to take too many guys in the same spot. And, and what's cool about it is that it kind of works. Like some of the guys that I mentioned, like Harrison Burton, you know, kind of a low owned guy, like he, you know, is one of the guys that could start near the front. Sindrick, yeah, he's good. Almondinger, he's good, but they're both chalky. So if you wanted to get, you know, a little less chalky, who did I say was good? Brandon Jones, like for example. So like he could be a good low own play to put in with Harrison Burton. Like if you wanted to play two dominators, as some people like to call them, two guys to maybe lead fast, lead laps or to um, get fastest laps, you know, you, you could do worse than going two kind of unchalky guys in the dominator position. Or maybe if you're going to build more lineups, you could, you know, set a rule that to put one of these two right in every lineup. Um, you know, remember, I mean, he's right outside of Hemrick in the pole. And if Hemrick doesn't, doesn't, doesn't get out so well, and who knows, maybe Brandon Jones could lead. It's just a, you know, a bunch of laps right off the bat. And as I said, you get the lead. It's like Yonkers. It's hard to pass over there. So that's where I would start. Um, Herbs, as I mentioned before, is a good solid play. And he has an incredible amount of play dif place differential. So he's in the 30 hole. Uh, that's, that's a pretty strong. Now, again, the good thing is you're never going to be able to get all these guys in. So that's why it's kind of cool. Um, no one's going to yell at me. Uh, Le uh, Alex LeBay, again, he's a good place differential play. And he's not going to be that high Leon. JJ Le Yaley, he could be. Um, so that, that's the way I'm approaching this. Again, you know, we're, we're not real Uber NASCAR experts here, but, you know, we're, 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 we're learning and we're getting good, good information. And as I said, one thing I'm pretty elite at is knowing how to leverage that information into good, good low own lineup. So um, that's what I'm doing. Uh, this is, you know, I'm, 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 and that's what I recommend you guys do too. I mean, not, you don't have to use my projections or my grid, but, you know, like I said before in one of the previous videos, just find a bunch of projections that you trust, watch, you know, look at, you know, look at good content. And I've already read, read, recommended Brandon stuff and we'll get Race for the Prize on here one of these days. And, um, you know, and then then you, the most important thing is, is is make sure that you don't play all the chalk. You know, you can play some chalk if they stand out. Like, for example, um, Sindrick is fine. You know what I mean? Like I would rather play Sindrick, for example, than Almondinger, right? Based on my assessments, right? So assuming that these assessments are right, okay? And, and whatever this means to you, a 285 versus a 257, the fact that, that Sindrick is higher ranked and, you know, he's, he's higher ranked, so he should be a little higher owned. So there's nothing particularly wrong with that. Um, but then what I would do, it may, I'd make these kind of distinctions. Like I'd play Brandon Jones, before I would play Justin Algier because he rates higher and he's lower own. Okay. Now again, it's garbage in, garbage out. Unless your projections and your met matrix uh, matrices, I guess, are 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 saw are solid, um, then this process doesn't work. And also, your ownership projections have to be pretty solid, or the process doesn't work. But uh, that that's you know that that's on you. Okay. Um, I'm just kind of showing you how to build lineups given um, you know the availability of, availability of decent information. So. Uh, that's where I'm at today. Uh, another guy, by the way, I should bring up who's going to be really, really popular is, uh, is Blaine Perkins. Um, he's 4,700 and he's races on this track. Um, he, he's in the Arca series. He races here before. And so if, if you have say 4,500 left, I mean, you could play him with, with, I would say relative safety, but I mean, it's car racing. Anything can, anything can happen. Um, all right, that's pretty much it. Uh, as I mentioned, I don't know if I'll be able to watch any of it. I'm going to be, as I said, I'm going to be going to a restaurant tonight, which is, you know, not something we do too often anymore. So, uh, yeah, enjoy, good luck, and uh, that's it.